All right, appreciate you all joining us. Thanks for covering our program. Uh, as we start, I'd like to take this time to acknowledge and remember all those lives affected by 9-11. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do a little bit this week to educate our guys. I was thinking about it this morning. You know, 20, 22 years ago, not, not many guys on our team were even alive um, when this occurred. So it's important for us to help educate them and just help them understand how lives were impacted through that tragedy. And then also make sure we understand how grateful we need to be for people of service um, that, that protect us, defend our country, and then also locally, whether it be, um, you know, fire department, uh, police, uh, et cetera. So, um, but just want to want to make sure we all acknowledge that before anything else. Um, wrapping up last week, uh, did not play our best football. Um, felt like we had some moments where we could have taken advantage of the opportunity that presented. We got down 14 nothing early. The game was very fast early. Um, our guys um, kind of were, were not quite on tip-top game mode. It felt like early in the game. And then we sort of settled in. Second quarter, um, we bounced back. We responded, and we showed that we were going to fight through some adversity and get, cut the lead from 14-0 to zero to 14-10. to 10 with Chris Lewis's touchdown catch. And then with 50 seconds left before half, um, allowed them to convert on a, on a vertical pass where we didn't get the ball down and score right before halftime to make it 21 to 10, which was really a, a sort of a, a, a backbreaker to some extent. And then um, came out third quarter, I thought played really good defense early. You know, they pinned us back. We had a penalty on a third down run. That would have been a first down on a holding call that was unfortunate. It was a field position game. They were playing on our, our side of the field more. We punted three times. They punted twice. Their third possession on third and nine, quarterback scrambles for 11 yards. Um, we have a helmet come off. I felt like the helmet came off because of a hands to the face that wasn't acknowledged during the game. Um, and that made a 11-yard scramble, which I thought should have been a two offsetting penalties at, at you know, at minimum, it made it a 26-yard uh, a game. And then next thing you know, they're scoring again, and it's 28 to 10. And at that point, we just couldn't find our way to scratch and claw to get back in the game. But um, there, it wasn't all good, obviously. We didn't win. We didn't handle our business. It wasn't all bad. Um, a lot of things to fix. Um, some, of the, some of the bad, I already said some of it, field position game, um, getting off on third down on defense, um, maybe sustaining some dr drives on third down on offense. I didn't feel like we held up at the line of scrimmage well enough on offense. We've got to strain and play with more physicality. Um, hats off to Kansas State. They're a good team. They're well coached, they're physical, and they're talented. Uh, one of the big positives I did take away from the game, um, their offense for the first time in eight games didn't gain more than 400 yards. We held them to under 400 yards. You look back going against – you know, Alabama and Baylor and a bunch of Big 12 teams last year, they had eight straight games of over 400 yards of offense, so that was a positive. Um, have to respond quickly. Uh, before we move on to the next opponent, I'm, I will announce our players of the game. Offensive Player of the Week, uh, Chris Lewis had five catches for 50 yards, two exceptional catches, uh, one for touchdown. Defensive Player of the Week, Javon Solomon, four tackles, a sack, a quarterback hit, and then – was just really disruptive all day and played with great energy and effort. Special teams player of the week, Devontae Ross, he had one kickoff return for 35 yards. Thought he managed the kickoff returns well, though, in regards to how he communicated when we were bringing him out and when we weren't. Um, he also had five catches on offense for 38 yards. Um, job takers of the week, uh, defensively, T.J. Jackson. Offensively, Kyler Gibson. And then the special teams job taker of the week, Keyshawn Campbell, last year he was the defensive job taker of the week. He's a guy that you're going to need to remember his name. He's going to be a really good football player here. Does everything full speed, all right? Um, and then uh, the Nathan Harris John Johnson Service Award goes to Jaden Palms, a uh, tremendous young man who's in our program from Chickasaw High School down in Mobile. Um, shared a lot of his story with our team last week, a young man who had Division three scholarship opportunities, chose to come here on a walk-on tryout, has made the team, um, and just does everything with class, and has fought through a lot of adversity on and off the field. Very proud of Jaden. Um, Corey McCullough's Spirit Award goes to Jackson Worley. Jackson's fighting an injury right now, 
But, man, at practice, he's been awesome. He's brought great energy. He's been around, like, even while he's been having to overcome an injury, taking water bottles to guys and looking out for guys. And, like, for a freshman to do that, it's very special and unique. And then the workout warrior of the week, which is really our developmental guys who um, are, are lifting an extra time or two during the week instead of going to meetings at times, uh, goes to an offensive lineman named Tyler Cappy, who's been in our program now for a second year, who I think has got a chance to make an impact on this program on the field on Saturdays um, at some point. And then moving forward, a lot of respect for the opponent we have this week, James Madison. I, I think when you look at programs that have sustained success and the culture that they've built, man, James Madison is a really good blueprint of what that looks like. They've got a winning record for nine straight years right now. All right, their last time they didn't have a winning record was 2013. Um, so they've had a winning record every every season going back to 2014. Some of those records you look in there, um, I mean, I'm blown away just looking at it. Nine and four, nine and three, 14 and one national title, 14 and one uh, runner up FCS nationals. Uh, nine and four, 14 and two, seven and one, 12 and two, eight and three, and then two and zero oh this year. So the most losses they've had in the season in the last nine years is nine and four going back to 2014. All right, that's what we want to be. Like, we've had one winning season here. They've had nine in a row. All right, they are a well-established program with high standards and a culture of winning. Coach Signetti does a great job. Since 2019, when he got there as head coach, they're 43 and eight. All right, so – we better get our hard hat on and get ready to play a, a, a physical, tough football game. A lot of respect for these guys across the board. Well coached in all three phases. Good players. Uh, really tough outfit that we got to get ready to play this week. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Hey, John. It's John and Dawson. I wanted to ask you about Chris Lewis. I believe you were the one who recruited him to Kentucky. When he was in high school, what did you see out of him? And just talk a little bit about the relationship y'all developed over the years. Yeah, I followed Chris since he was probably a sophomore. Um, I think when it stood out to me that I wanted Chris to be a part of the program where I was at prior to here, I was at a spring practice. They were doing a live one-on-one -on -one tackling drill where they used a blocker, kind of like the old Oklahoma drill. Um, we're not allowed to do that in college anymore. Those rules have changed. But um, – he was – I was there to watch a linebacker. I'm not going to name names, but a highly touted recruited linebacker. And Chris Lewis volunteered to go up against that linebacker and try to block him as a receiver. And I was like, okay, wow, who's this tall, lanky kid that is calling this other guy out that's a good player as a linebacker? <clears throat> and so I really wasn't there to evaluate Chris initially. And he stood out, great length, good work ethic, tough kid, very, very smart. Um, good ball skills, as you saw Saturday. Um, and so, uh, got him to come to the University of Kentucky at the time. He had Notre Dame and Texas A&M and a lot of offers. Uh, and um, and then a year ago, or not even a year ago, now December, when he went into the transfer portal, um, you know, a lot of times those things that happen where guys end up, a lot of times because of prior relationship and trust and who they know and my relationship with Chris was very good, and I called the guys at Kentucky and just made sure he was in good standing with how he was doing life there, and he was. And um, and so we're glad to have him here. I think he's on the right track to doing some good things. Um, really talented kid. I think I think he's got a high ceiling. Hey, John, it's Jamal at WCPA. Obviously, um, there's no such thing as, or you may not consider moral victories to be a thing, but you did mention holding Kansas State to under 400 yards. Uh, is there anything else that you take away from that game that you can use to help prepare you now as you get ready for conference play? Yeah, when we executed, you know, our I talked a lot last week about effort and execution. When we executed last week, I mean, we, we handled our business fine. The There were so many self-inflicted things that we still have to clean up. You know, I talk a lot about Troy doesn't beat Troy. Well, we got beat by Kansas State last week, give them credit, but we beat ourselves at times too. And we still have a long way to go. This team's young, man. Like, I think there's some known returns, but there's some guys we're counting on to play a lot of football right now in certain spots that they've got to learn the detail of how you do your job. And 
Um, and it can't be kind of close. It's got to be precise and well executed. And um, so I think I'm going to have the opportunity today when we meet the team to show them some clips where we didn't do our job very well and where I could have been the running back and made a nine yard gain because nobody, we just didn't fit the right gap in the run game. Or we didn't, we didn't block a player on defense, on their defense that he didn't have to do anything special. He just walked into making a tackle. So, you know, if you get beat by the opponent, I don't like losing, but if I get beat by an opponent because they play really well and they're maybe better, that you can live with that. When you beat yourself and you don't handle the details of your job well, that's where you've got to grow. And so to kind of tell you where I think, you know, I can go back and say, man, when we did our job really well, we gave ourselves an opportunity to be in that football game and have it, we could have made it a four-quarter game and been in it. What kept us from doing that, though, was just not doing our job well at times. And so we're more than good enough. The question is, are we disciplined enough and are we detailed enough? And when we are, I think we had a chance to be a pretty good team. When we're not, I don't think we can beat air. And then as a quick follow, um, to see Ray, I guess, get the respect that a team like Kansas State from the Big 12 gave him, I'm, I don't think he had more than three balls maybe thrown his way, uh, not counting the interception. What does that say about the kind of player that he is, that he's able to stand out on the, on the radar like that of a team like that? Yeah, I think, I think Reddy, you turn on the tape and it's not real hard to figure out, man, you, you've, you've got a dude there. And, um, you know, I've had numerous NFL people uh, reaching out to me about him and coming by. And um, I think it just shows that they recognize that, that he's going to be on the details of his job. You know, and what's so neat to see about Reddy when we got here uh, December 21, January 22, I Reddy was not real comfortable playing in press. And he had really comfortable playing off coverage all the time, which he still does some. We, we mix it up. But now he's, he's comfortable doing a lot of different things and putting himself in challenging positions to maybe contest throws. Um, and he contested some throws the other day where he was, you know, step for step on receivers and intermediate routes, which – that takes a lot of confidence to do and play the way he played. And I think that showed with how they approach their game plan to some degree. Hey, Coach Josh. Uh, is there an update on um, Stephen Catledge? Catledge, yeah. Yeah, Catledge um, got the injury report this morning. Uh, probably doubtful right now. I mean, the, the um, x-ray looked clean, so good there. It's a lower leg deal. Um, following up with a couple other things with the docs this morning. Uh, if I had to guess today, Josh, he'd be out. But I don't, you know, these things are so fluid. I mean, this morning I got some guys I think are going to play and then all of a sudden maybe not. And then I think they are. And then they're going to get cleared. These they, so early in the week to know. But I would say right now with him doubtful probably. And do you have an update on TJ Jackson? Yeah, he's going to be at practice today. And then we'll see Saturday what happens. It's a good question, though. I try. <laughs> hey, I'm just glad you made it. I'm, I appreciate you. I, I made them. You don't know. I don't know if you are aware, but I made everybody else hold on for you. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, for having to wait. Yeah. That, hey, you're you're well, us waiting on you right now for five minutes. Ain't no big deal. We can do that. Anything else? I mean, you guys hey, are you about to yeah, say, you guys are going to be really easy right. today. <laughs> um, just about James Madison, what they were able to do last year after, you know, jumping up to the FBS level from FCS, and then and especially in such a, a conference like the Sun Belt. How impressive was that? Um, and really, does that kind of put into perspective the kind of team that you're going up against on Saturday? Yeah, without question. I, I've told our staff already. You know, we had we had a good team last year. We have yet to build the program here the way it needs to be built, in my opinion. They have a program that they've got nine straight years of winning records. I mean, their worst record in nine years is nine and four in 2014. And so um, the culture and the standards and the expectations and the daily rhythms in which they do things, man, they, they are a big time outfit. And I have a lot of respect for them. I, I would love for our program to emulate theirs in some regards. And um, because 
while we have a proud history here at Troy, I think maybe a little bit up and down as of recent. Um, and what my my vision is for our program is to sustain success and play at a high standard day in day out. And we're not quite there yet, you know. And so um, I, I think I'm not surprised at all with the, the success they've had. Uh, they're well coached. They've got really good football players. They play extremely hard. Um, they've got great support there, resources, facilities at JMU are top of our league in a lot of regards. Um, and so I'm zero surprised with the success they've had moving up to FBS. Uh, I'm at, quite honestly, I kind of expected it. I really did. I'm not surprised at all. And then I just have one final. Uh, you mentioned Chris Lewis. I mean, what was your vantage point and your perspective on his two catches on Saturday? Well, the first one they made on their sideline wasn't the cleanest route. We were in a stack formation. He kind of didn't – really didn't quite get to his landmark on the route, to be honest with you. But then I saw the catch, and I think – I was like, all right, I think he might have been two feet above the rim if we were playing basketball there. I mean, that was uh, – he just kept elevating. And then to go up with one hand – and come down with that thing uh, was just I – mean, that was as good of a catch as I've seen. And then the one uh, the one that he made the touchdown on, I told the offense, I said, hey, put C. Lou in here. I want to see a fade. I want to see I want to see him go hunt. And um, I've seen him do that, I don't know, like 500 times. So I'm, when we threw the ball up there, right there, I was like, this is a touchdown. Before he even threw it, I'm like, this guy's not stopping him. So he's he's got that ability. Um confident in him you know he's got a long way to go from a growth standpoint um just being a complete player he's he's not he's not a finished product but he's got good ball skills he's got good length and he's he cares and he's smart so um i was not surprised in either one of them